The last 13 years have been a real eye-opener for me, said Phyllis Rogers, retiring Silver Springs Municipal Judge. Rogers said the work was totally different from any legal work she's ever done before. Well, I'll tell you, for as old as I am, I've been through a lot of stuff in my life, but the last 13 years have been a real eye-opener for me. Um, been totally different than anything that I've ever done uh, because I've not been on one side or the other. Uh, it's, it's, it's a hard job to adjust to, but you just have to be fair and do the best job that you can do. You deal with a lot of different things as municipal judge. What are some yes. of the things you deal with? Well, I deal with, with all Class C misdemeanors that come into court, and those can be either through the traffic code or through the penal code, several different things. Um, I go to the jail and have jail duty every morning, seven days a week, where I magistrate people who have been who have been incarcerated for some reason or another. Um, I have I have pre-trials. We have. Uh, jury trials and non-jury trials, I have indigent dockets, I have juvenile dockets, you name it, we've done just about everything down here with the exception of civil cases and thank goodness that's not something that's that's uh, in my jurisdiction. What background prepares you for this? There's no background that can prepare <laughs> you for this, Jimmy. Now actually, um, I started out in law with uh, uh, Smith Johnson McDowell many many years ago and and had no had no indication at that point that I would be doing anything in law I did some real estate law and then we transferred to Dallas when we came back here from Dallas uh, I interviewed with Frank Long at the district attorney's office and I went to his staff I worked in the DA's office for 10 years and then uh, after being victim assistance coordinator for about seven years I felt like I, I needed a change so I went to a civil law firm where I worked for Powers and Blunt for five years and then changed when Dusty Raby was elected went to the county attorney's office worked there three years before I took the bench here and I've been here 13 years so that ought to tell you how old I am <laughs> old but, enough to retire but it also says that you've had a, a tremendous amount of experience with yes. law and dealing with yes. that kind of thing. Yes, I, most of my experience was in felony criminal law, of course. Uh, as I said with Mr. Long in the district attorney's office, I studied studied felony criminal law. Wasn't any need to know very much about anything else. And I felt like when I came here, I was very well prepared to take on Class C misdemeanor law. However, you learn very quickly that there's nothing else like Class C misdemeanor law. So subsequently, uh, you know, you have to you have to take lots and lots of classes and do continuing education hours every year. How difficult is it to pull together a municipal jury? Well, really, it's not difficult at all as long as people will handle, uh, as long as they come in for jury summonses. Um, Right now, we're in the process of, of uh, obtaining a new jury wheel that's a little bit more updated. Right now, we actually get our lists through the city where they pull them from water listings, and they have to be random listings, and they pull us a list of how, however many people I feel like we need. We just go through those and notify people, and then they're picked, they're chosen exactly like a district court or a county court at law would choose their juries. And it's just as important, really, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think probably uh, maybe just as, just as important, maybe a little bit more important, because, you know, Class C misdemeanors and these courts are, are where most people come in contact with the judicial system and with the court system. And, uh, you know, we, we handle sometime around 900 cases a month. So we have more cases than anyone else in the city does, a matter of fact, combined. So um, I, I think it's important to let people know how courts work, um, for them to understand that we are fair and we are as fair as we can possibly be. I think, I think all those things are important. There has to be a balance of, of law and grace. In oh, this absolutely, world. absolutely. The people that you see here are people that I meet on the street every day. Um, it's, it's, of course, even though it is criminal law, it's, you don't like to think of people who are criminals that come into this court because it, it, it could be any of us at that point. Um, and the basis for that, I think, is just trying to make this a, a safer place to live and make sure that everyone understands what traffic laws are and how important they are as far as those kinds of cases are concerned. Any particular type of case stand out in your mind? 
goodness, that would that would be a really difficult one to answer. <laughs> too many, right? Yes, there are just too many of them. Too okay. many of them. Uh, we have lots and lots of times where uh, there are people who are, come time and time and time again. Uh, we have lots and lots of cases where people just can't afford to take care of fines and court costs that they get. And there are a lot of times when people just want to have their voice heard. So there are too many, too many to really pick out something that's, that really stands out in my mind as far as case types are concerned. Is there any one type of case easier to do than another? I mean, is traffic violations easier to do than some other thing? Not necessarily. I, I think that every case that we handle here in this court affects somebody's life every day. And sometimes you don't know how, uh, how drastically it might be affecting their life. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's one that's any more important or any one that's, that's less important or more fun to deal with or not. Right. Uh, Advice to whoever comes to this bench? I think the best advice I can give is just have an open mind. Uh, you have to learn how to be fair with people. You have to learn how to listen, but you also have to know where you where you draw that line. Um, you, you can't hear facts of cases. Sometimes people don't want you to hear the facts of their case as much as they want you to hear their situation. And, and there's a real fine line there that you have to draw, and you have to learn how to draw that and be very strict with that because you want to give them the best the best opportunity for their case to be heard in court that they can have. Okay. Retiring and what's next? Well, we'll be moving uh, from Sulphur Springs. That's a hard thing for me to do. We've been here a long, long time. But we're moving to Nacogdoches. That's where my daughter and her husband live. So I'll get to be around my granddaughter a lot. Uh, that's that's going to be very good for us, I think. Uh, total change of environment at, at my age will be hard to get used to. but. Uh, and certainly not coming to work seven days a week will be hard to get used to, but uh, it's something I'm gonna try to accomplish. <laughs>